Welcome back everyone. Looks like it's kit time again. I had someone send this in to me, unannounced. It just showed up in my P.O. box. It's from Matthew, who has sent things in before. And uh, it comes with no paperwork or anything. But it does appear to be a headphone amplifier. There's the uh, quarter inch headphone jack right there. And uh, positive negative regulators for split supply. And it has four dual op amps. And when I see these 10 ohm resistors all in a row, I think they're paralleling the outputs so they can drive the uh, headphones with them. So this will be pretty interesting. So what I'm going to do is uh, open this package here and I'll test out some of the components, make sure they're good, and uh, begin soldering the kit together and we'll do some tests and see if it's any good or not. Okay, what we have here is a double-sided board. It seems to be of very good quality. Looks like they have fitted this diode already. Looks like a 5.6 volt Zener. I see there's some 4148s on there. They probably put that on there because it looks just like them. And they might have had people put diodes in the wrong place and the circuit not work right. So they pre-fitted that one. I emptied all the components into a container. I'd recommend doing that because they have a tendency to want to roll away and get lost. So I'm going to test a few components before getting down to soldering. And here it is completed. Not tested, just completed. I'm not going to clean the flux. There's not really much on there. Try to minimize that. Can you spot the error? One error that I know of, I got this put in backwards. The uh, slots are facing inwards instead of outwards. But, you know, I'm not going to monkey with it. Just run with it as it is. So I'm going to hook this thing up and see if it works or not. Okay, it's all hooked up. Requires a 24 volt center tap transformer. Has on board power supply, rectifier, filtering, of course the regulators. I used a bulb limiter to make sure in case there was any problems that wouldn't blow anything up. This board doesn't use a lot of power, so you can use a smaller transformer. This is a 450 milliamp, but you could even use a 300 or 250 milliamp transformer. I have my music source. I actually listened to it for about an hour, different music on my Sennheisers. And I must say, it sounds pretty good. I can't really show you how it sounds through headphones, but I can plug it into an amplifier and give you a quick sample. sounds pretty good to me. Extremely low noise, no power supply hum or anything like that. When you first power it up there is a about a one second delay. It has a relay here. The reason for that is uh, you might get some pop when you turn the thing on. Especially when you power it down. This detects the AC is being cut so you won't get all that noise as the uh, capacitors discharge 
and you know these op amps sometimes will make noises and squeals as the voltage drops so it's a completely silent start up and shut down very nice one thing I, I did notice I don't particularly like is the film bypass capacitors uh, one for the positive one for the negative rail well this one is pretty close to the ICs but this one is pretty far they really should have a couple sets of them or you know have them right between the chips here where they're pretty close and a lot of the manufacturers recommend using ceramic types because they have extremely low inductance okay now I've hooked up some loads 33 ohm resistors to each channel and we'll scope off of one with a 2.83 volt load that'll produce a quarter of a watt just about about 2.4 something watts so that would be punishing to your ears if you played your headphones that loud but we want to see how well this performs here's the spectrum analyzer mode on the scope we have a 1 kilohertz fundamental 4.5 kilohertz 1% pilot signal that's built into the source signal it's just a reference marker so I can see how it compares to other harmonic distortion peaks and there are essentially none. This thing is very clean. This is at 10 kilohertz. I don't have a pilot signal with a 10 kilohertz signal, but it's mainly just background noise or maybe quantization noise from the scope, but it's pretty clean. This is at 20 hertz. Of course, this works a lot slower because it has to collect enough data at such a low frequency before it can display anything and again it's pretty clean okay I set the level so the sine wave just touches this graticule and this graticule we'll start at 10 Hertz and we'll check the uh, frequency response and the scope says we're right at 10 Hertz Let me jump up to 20 hertz. So it's staying pretty flat. It's flat way below 20 hertz. Let me jump up to... Okay, this is 40 hertz. It's pretty much staying the same. Here is the 20 to 20 kilohertz sweep. Just make sure the waveform stays right on this graticule here. Well, this one and this one. Okay, it's staying flat. Now the music player will, you see that little jitter there near the end, that's caused by the music player. But this thing has perfectly flat frequency response. So there you have it, the little headphone amplifier board kit. But I did mention before it uses these Japan Radio Corporation's 4580 op amps. Three of them per channel are paralleled to be able to give enough output drive for lower impedance headphones such as 32 ohms. So I tested down to 32 ohms, well actually 33 with those resistors, but you know it's not going to make a difference. You're probably fine with 16 ohm headphones as well because I was driving it with pretty high output which would punish your ears, you would never run it that loud. So, you know, at 16 ohms, you'd be using a much lower signal, so it should give you enough output current for that. Seems to have a little bit of gain about four times, which works with headphone players, as long as your headphones aren't too high impedance, because you'll need more voltage. 
Yeah, it sounded just fine with my 64 ohm Sennheisers, I believe they are. Now if you have some high-end phones, they might be 150 or even 300 ohms. And you may not get enough output voltage using a headphone player. This thing's really meant for line level output, which would give you more input signal to have a larger output signal for higher impedance phones. Like we just looked at, no distortion that I can measure with my equipment across the frequency band. You know, flat frequency response, no noise, no electrical hum. Includes the power up and down anti-pop relay so you don't get the popping in your ears if you turn it on or power it down. Uh, very nice little board. I did have a couple quibbles here about the supply bypass cap I mentioned before. Another thing, this doesn't have any input coupling capacitor, so make sure whatever you connect to it doesn't have any DC offset, because that will pass right on through to the headphones. If you wanted, you could add some input coupling capacitors. I would think that uh, 4.7 microfarads would be enough. Good quality film caps. One thing I would really like to see on any headphone amp board is a blend function. What that does is take some of the left channel and send it to the right, and a little bit of the right channel and send it to the left. The reason for that is, if you're like me and you listen to older music, say from the 60s, where they would pan some of the instruments or even the vocals totally left or right, and listening to that through headphones is kind of odd. has a really odd effect to it because it's unnatural to have only sound going in one ear. So with a blend function, it would cross-mix some of the signals so it would sound more natural. And, of course, the blend function can be defeatable for normal music. And to me, it really makes a difference. So, you know, that's something that could be added if you want to hack the board. Well, that's it. Hope you liked the review. Thanks for watching.